Hi, welcome back to the lab. Uh, so I decided to go a bit further. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to actually really get this problem solved. So I uh, went ahead and I started working with it uh, by putting the battery, you know, closing everything up, putting the batteries in, testing and whatnot, and then pulling it apart, yada, yada. And I got really fed up with that. So I just solved, there's a couple, there are two um, through hole uh, vias maybe. Uh, they don't look like vias, they look like actual attachment points for wires. So um, right where the uh, battery pads are, so I just whacked in a bunch of uh, wires, hooked it up to a bench supply, and now I can feed uh, three volts for my bench supply. And I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear that god awful noise. So um, after some trial and error, what it looks like the problem is, is there's two caps here, C44 and C43. Uh, they look a little ugly because I've just reworked them back to what the original state is so you can hear the glorious uh, whine from the, uh, the uh, charge, uh, capacitively charged, uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Um, it's a charge pump. Uh, which is built into this actual chipset here, this uh, HY2613C. It has a uh, capacitive uh, charge pump, which is uh, provided, and the, the actual charge pump is done with C43, and the output smoothing is done with C44. So, um, you know, if you just kind of poke your, your finger poking thing here, you, you can see uh, that as I touch the board, the actual pitch of the harmonic or the the, the, the pitch of the frequency, you know, the, the output whine frequency changes. Um, so, in chatting with a couple people from uh, EV Blog Forum, uh, the EV Blog Forum IRC, uh, and after making a couple of silly knocks with my soldering soldering iron, um, I finally realized that there's two things that are a problem here. The first one is that the ceramics seem to be both vibrating because of a 32 kilohertz clock that is using pulse skipping. Uh, well, I should say, sorry, the, the charge pump is using a 32 kilohertz uh, PWM, or pulse, and it's skipping, and it happens to be skipping at five kilohertz, which is where I'm seeing the five kilohertz from. So there's actually there's two frequencies superimposed on each other, or mixed in, uh, and we're hearing the combination of the two. So if I actually, remove, and what is what I did is if you remove C44, there's still a very tiny, tiny high, high pitch whine. That's actually still C43 uh, perhaps running at a very high frequency closer to, uh, um, uh, cl closer, much closer to the 32 kilohertz. Um, so th there's an interesting thing. So here I'm using about 20 milliamps. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually measure this a lot more uh, precisely with a microcurrent, but I suspect that if I pull off this cap here, I'll get rid of the noise, but then I'll also increase the current usage because it's going to have to work a lot harder to provide the same current. Um, and I've already tried replacing with a uh, small tantalum capacitor here. Uh, this one, C43, is a measured value of 1.4 microfarads, and C44, uh, I didn't even measure yet. <laughs> I'll do that in a second. Um, but I replaced C43 with a 4.7 microfarad tantalum, I think it is, hang on a sec. Yeah, a 4.7 microfarad tantalum, 10 volt. Um, it's the DigiKey part number uh, 511-1461-1-ND. Uh, one dash one dash I got this off digikey.ca digi uh, from ROM, uh, ROM Semiconductor. I don't actually know if it's the same part number for the US, but I would imagine it probably is. So uh, let's stop the singing capacitor here, shut that off, and I'm going to go ahead and pull uh, the really noisy one off first, the C44, and we'll take a look at that. Alright, so I just pulled off C44, which is uh, again this guy right here, and um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll see what it sounds like without that.
that's beautiful you can barely hear anything and we'll go ahead and unfortunately I'll have to take my word for the uh, scope measurement here a little bit um, okay. we'll go ahead and measure so I'm still seeing oops, on the scope about 33 kilohertz but however here I'm seeing the same measure so this is an interesting thing what I think is happening here is somebody chose a 32 kilohertz or by for whatever reasons there was a 32 kilohertz uh, PWM pulse or P PWM pulse is being used to uh, generate this uh, capacitive uh, or this, this charge coupler. So the, the voltage boost using a charge coupler, a charge coupled, or is it sorry, uh, capacitively coupled charge pump, charge pump. That's it. Thank you. Anyway, oh gosh. Anyway, whatever. So it's using the 32 kilohertz signal to generate the, the YouTube for the charge pump. And the thing here is that well. Somebody probably th said, well, the output waveform is really ugly, so why don't we whack on a output smoothing cap? The problem with that smoothing cap is that that changes the behavior of the charge pump and starts it skipping pulses. And that brings the audible range from, you know, from 32 kilohertz down to 5 kilohertz. Or should not audible, but the pulse into the audible range. So now without this capacitor, the charge pump seems to be working, well, it's working harder, it's not skipping. But at the same time, I don't know, well, actually I do notice a little bit of extra, it's probably using a bit of extra current. Uh, it was solid 20 milliamps before, now it's bumping between 20 and 30 milliamps. So it's using a bit more current. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that this is truly, truly, um, so even without replacing C43, already this is much better much much better so that's interesting so in the end it looks like the solution is very simple is we uh, we simply remove C44 so C44 is a uh, approximately 10 microfarad uh, capac ceramic capacitor it was uh, smoothing the output you can see in my little diagram that I have up here this is C44 right here so it's smoothing the output from the backlight, which is uh, provided by a charge pump in the IC, and uh, going through the actual back, the backlight LEDs with a small current uh, limiting resistor. So um, that's fantastic. That's just you know pop a component off. I did some measurements, and um, with C44 in place, um, I measured both with and without the backlight. Without the backlight, it's 2.2 milliamps. With the backlight. It's 26.2 milliamps, uh, and with C44 removed, so now we're talking about a completely unregulated output on uh, the backlight, uh, which again you don't really notice. Like here, I'll turn this on; you can take a look. Um, but I honestly don't think anybody will really notice. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. No, it's not even flickering in the camera. Let's look really quickly, but. No, it's not. And again, if it was flickering, it would—I mean, it would be running. In, you'd see a flicker at 32 kilohertz, which I don't think your eyes can see. Um, the flip side is, it may actually be a bit brighter. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, all that to say is, um, uh, there doesn't seem to be any adverse effects. Um, and when we're running without C44, the uh, again, without any backlight, without C44, it's 2.2 milliamps, which is good. It means our measurements are correct. And uh, with the backlight, it's now 27.3 milliamps. So it's a difference of 1.1 milliamps, um, which honestly, I could care less about. <laughs> My ears are not being assaulted. I'm a happy kid. So um, I think uh, I'm going to leave it like this. I don't see any reason not to. And uh, if you want to go ahead and modify your unit, I strongly recommend it. Uh, it's super easy to do. You just have to pull off a small SMD uh, resistor, uh, resistor part, <laughs> capacitor. And uh, that's it. No more, uh, no more high pitch squeal. Like I said, uh, there's only one little trick: is that uh, there is still the 32 kilohertz uh, drive signal for the charge pump, and that does come through on C43 ever so slightly. I can barely, barely, barely hear it with the cover off. 
I'm fairly certain that with the cover on I won't be able to hear it. Um, however, if you have extremely sensitive uh, hearing in the high range, uh, the high frequency range, it's possible that you will, you know, you, you'll hear it. And uh, if that's the case, one possibility, which I tried uh, that 4.7 microfarad tent, uh, microfarad tantalum, which is not strictly necessary, but if you were to replace C43 with it, I suspect it would work just fine. Uh, and it probably will get rid of that, uh, that high-pitched squealing. It may even make this a bit more efficient too, I'm not entirely sure, but, you know, try it out and see. If you think it does, post something on the forum, post a reply on my video, do whatever, um, but I hope this helps. Alright, take care. Cheers.